Good morning. Today is the 19th of May and here we are at the Chiltern Hills Vintage Vehicle Stroke Classic Car Show Rally. Yes, they seem to be using all kinds of different names. Um, this is what it says on the programme anyway. It says Classic Car Show, but I've seen signs of Vintage Vehicle Rally. I don't, I don't, I don't know. Um, but never mind. We're uh, going to be starting a series of slightly shambolic shuffles. I do apologise if I fall over, if I get things wrong, if um, there is wind noise. I'm afraid it's just the way it goes on this channel. And also, thank you Mayor of London and all your friends around the country with your ultra low emission and clean air zones, which means we can't talk about diesels. And uh, that's be particularly relevant in a moment where we see a line of things we don't discuss. But we can discuss this very, very nice Rover 200 BRM. Correct wheels on there, as you can see. Very, very nice condition alloy wheels on this, actually. They're much better condition than the Cosmos wheels that are similar on my Rover 45 V6. 1999 to 2000, when the BRMs were new, they were quite expensive and um, they couldn't sell them, really. But they sold them into 2000, which is after the Rover 25 had come out. So they are much, much, much more beloved now than they used to be. Which is uh, which is good. One that sort of really replaced um, those was the ZR. Very late ZR actually last year of production for these 2005. I think those actually are the standard rear lamps of the facelifted ones. I could be wrong. Um, so many of these have been changed to aftermarket ones. This one looks nice and powerful actually. It's in very nice condition, particularly under the bonnet. That's um. It's pretty nice. Whether that's a 160 or not, I don't think it is. It's not got the VVC system, so it's probably a 120. Uh, it could be 105. And then we have something very special here. I've been asked to be part of the um, Splashing Pistons and Beards and Bangers stand here. And um, Simon from Beards and Bangers has made something rather interesting. This is not a 200 BRM. It's not. It's a sort of evocation of what possibly kind of Lotus would have done had they made a version of the Rover 200. Obviously the Lotus Elise used 1.8 litre K-series engines, some of which were used in the R3 200, such as in the 200 VI for example, and the VVC version. This car though is um, it's sure to be a BRM, <laughs> where it's got BRM bits, and um, for some reason the wheels have been painted in this shade with the Lotus badge in the middle. Um, I'm sure it is just a sort of normal uh, two, uh, 216 actually really but um, you know it's one of these it's one of these things and Colin Chapman's signature is on the back so um, there we go I'm sure that I'm sure he's kind of signed it himself right now we just uh, sort of skip a few of these and uh, go on to this um, ZR here which is owned by a gentleman by the name of David and there you can see his channel name He's just over there having a conversation with a gentleman there. 2004 ZR, the ZR 160 actually, so this has got the VVC engine. You can see we've got some lacquer peel. Actually, um, it looks quite solid. There's a bit of damage on that side of the car. But actually doesn't look too bad. He's, he probably didn't pay a lot for this. He's got all kinds of interesting sort of things that you can see. Actually, we'll go around and we'll just have a look at his uh, little information sheet there. And you can see some of the other projects which, uh, which are there. Oh, you can scan the QR code as well. There we go. Safe from the scrap man, four hundred pounds. Fantastic. I'm told this is a um, Japanese specification um, MGF actually. So this will be uh, quite an early one on a P ninety six ninety seven. There we go. The date of the factory record, it is export market. There we go. Yes, nineteen ninety seven. Which is uh, which is not which is nice. I keep forgetting they sold these cars over in Japan. Out of this row, we can have a look at this particular car here, which is a 2003 um, ZT. I forget actually if this is the 1.8 or the, uh, the V6. The others, um, well, we talked about that at the beginning of the video, so we won't do one any further. We'll go more to the um, Beards and Bangers um, stand here. Another ZR, this time a 2004. Actually, this has got the standard rear lights, so maybe the ones in the 2005 one are aftermarket after all. 
And then, yes, I bought the Volvo. I was going to bring something else, but um, uh, we've had problems with that particular car. So um, yeah, it's that, that's not here. <laughs> Hopefully next time we go to somewhere, we can bring the other car. I have, I have put uh, a nice little magnetic thing on the back of there that will probably fall off if I drive off. But it's just, it's just there for, uh, for all the purposes of the show. Everybody got one of those, which is nice. And then a 2005 Lexus IS. It's got some kind of body kit on it, this one. It's, it's got some TRD badges on it. I don't remember them making a TRD version of this. Perhaps the parts have been imported from somewhere else. These are one of the most fun cars I drove last year. Um, I very, very much recommend a Lexus IS if you've never tried one before. Then we've got... Uh, 2003 BMW E46 330 Ci. If you've seen the Shedfest videos, you'll know that there were lots and lots and lots of these and other types of E46 at that particular event. Um, this apparently Mr. Brook from Beards and Bangers had just acquired. And this one he just acquired as well. It's a very early R50 Mini Cooper. It's a Y Reg. Yes, exactly. So he'll be presumably in the Y register. That's really what it's called. It is called the Y register for these early minis. Um, whether you think that's a good joke or not, I don't know. That's up to you. And then we've got a streetwise we can talk about. That one we can't. This one we can. Wonderful. Um, very late one actually. This is looking particularly good today. It's got some very, very shiny alloy wheels on it. Look at that. Um, that is um, actually pretty nice. I thought, I thought we were supposed to have other streetwises coming to join us today. Maybe we'll see those a bit later, but uh, that is um, that is rather fetching. So we've uh, reached the car from the thumbnail. This belongs to uh, Dan, who uh, kindly let me drive this last year. It's a 1995 Rover 820 Vitesse Sport, and it is um, well, it's pretty good. Usually inside it would be uh, would be Nigel, but he appears to be a bit sort of um, half asleep this morning because it's a bit early. So he's uh, he's on the chair there, and then we've got some um, some more MG Rover rear action here. This time pre facelift ZR. This is a 160 in um, a nice shady yellow. There is actually an event coming up in August um, celebrating the 100 years of MG 120s of Rover, which I'm going to be attending, which is what we're advertising here. There we go, 3rd or 4th of August, um, mainly in the Cotswolds. I've already booked my combination things to that, so I'll be going to that. 2004 to 5 MG ZS. These cars handle very, very nicely. This particular one is, is a rare variant, actually. It's the um, 120 with the CT. That's a that's a rare old car that. And then we've got um, another ZS here, which is um, an early. It's preface. This is a 180. I think maybe the, the colour of this is celestial. There were lots of interesting colours offered um, by MG Rover back in the day in their monogram program, and that's one of them. And another ZT we can actually discuss. This is a. Uh, 2003 to 4. This is actually the um, um, 1.8 K series turbo. It should put out about 158 horsepower, but it's now been ma mapped at about 223, which is absolutely insane. Who said you couldn't have fun with the K series? So the guide I've got actually does include um, a list of quite a few of the cars that are actually here. Unfortunately, as I've just sort of found out, it doesn't include them all, so it's of, of some use, but um, we're going to have to do this sort of normal thing that we would usually do and just take a look at what we've got. So we're just going to go down this end and we'll have a look at some Granadas. There's a gentleman who commented on one of the Retro Rides Weekender videos that we don't see Mark 1 Ford Granada coupes in the videos that I do on my channel. Uh, well, here is one. <laughs> this is a 1974-75 Granada 3-litre gear coupe. 
very much more common with automatics. You could get a manual as well, but this is the only specification sold over here was the, the gear for the coupes. You could get other specification engines in other places. This has got some different wheels on it, and this is a manual one, so it's very rare. As is usual with the people who bring the Granadas to the shows, this is in superb condition. It's absolutely beautiful. It's the kind of thing that I would personally like to drive myself. We've got an unusual one here. This is um, another V6 engine Mark 1 Granada, but it's a pre-facelift. It's a very, very late pre-facelift. I thought the facelift occurred around sort of 74, 75, which would make this you know, a very, very late pre-facelift. You can see it's the original front end for the Granadas. I forget what specification that is now. We've got a Mark II. Now this could have been registered by Ford themselves. It's got the the right area code for that. I don't know if that was the case or not. Like a lot of the Mark IIs, this has had um, the later Mark III Scorpio Cosworth wheels fitted because the tyres are much easier to find for them. Um, Say so it's yeah, it's, a two, it's definitely a two point. I think this is. I think this is a gear. Certainly got the right interior for that Chatsworth interior on this. I've driven one of these because, of course, Mr. Coleman, rubbish mechanic, owns one and has had it in the family well forever. I think it is also on a Y plate, and it's similar to this. And then another Granada coupe. This is this is, this is a good day. You've got some enormous wheels on this one. Um, that one is uh, 73, 74 on an M. Let's see if this is a manual or it is an an automatic. That one's an auto. There was actually two sort of distinct sort of um, body shapes for the Mark One coupe. We only got this kind of straighter edged one with straight windows. There were the Coke bottle coupes as well, but I don't think they were sold over here. Right, uh, next section, I think. So some more Fords, but rather more modern Fords. Actually, much powerful Ford as well. This is a Mark III Focus RS by Mountune. That will have an excess of 300 horsepower in it, um, so it'll be quite fast. Then we've got the Mark II ST, it's an ST500. I don't think this is a sort of the one that um, necessarily would have existed. This has been sort of created. What if you've got the um, Volvo white block in this? Because actually, that's what the um, Mark II ST had a stand up ahead of Volvo white block five cylinder in them, which is similar to the engine in my car. And a couple more of these. It's just actually an RS, just one. Let's have a look at the back. Oh, it's, got, it's got the seats in it. It's producing stupid power, the RS model. It's absolutely stupid one. That's their face, that's 20, 10 to 11. And um, another Mark III, this is ST by pump speed. Not heard of that one. Look at the wheels on this, this is crazy. Imagine again, it's putting out bit more power than standard. This is the, that's just the ST line though, I don't know what's in that, I mean, it could be, any, could be anything really. Uh, it's a 15. Right, let's um, go down to the Chrysler Crossfire Club here. I think this is, if you look at my book, this is the, the number that's actually booked in. This is the SRT6 version of, um, of the Crossfire, which is the rare version. They've got more power than the standard Mercedes engine. Like a supercharger or something insane like that. The rest of them, I think they imported these from memory between 2003 and about 2009 in this country. And they are, um, yeah, we're based on the same platform as a Mercedes Benz SLK, the first generation one. I have driven one of these quite a while ago now. Uh, it was a coupe version of the one I drove, a 2004, I think it was. Um, and um, yeah, so you just look it up on the channel, on the Central Second Secondhand Classics. Um, so you can have a look at that if you want to see what I thought of the Chrysler Crossfire. Loose Alliance Classic Car Group. I think we might come back to this section a little bit later because uh, there's lots of gaps here. The show's not actually open to the public yet. This is, uh, you know, about an hour or so before it opens. So not everybody's here yet. So I'm just going to um, come back to that area a bit later and have a look at some Ford Transits instead. Look at this sort of modify one which is um very much like the sort of thing they used to create in the 70s isn't it but it's very 70s this mark ii um 
about sort of 78 79 on a tee. Look at these chairs and things I know. This is this sort of properly sort of done up. Wow. And a much more standard one. This is a very early one. This is a 66. They only came out in 65 of Mark 1 Transit, so that's, that's a very early one. It's immaculate as well. That's actually rather nice. This one, usually, if it's got the um, flat front end rather than the sort of nose, will be a petrol one. But it's a 73, 74 on an M. It looks like it's out of the set of the Sweeney or something like that. It's a right era for that. And then we've got another Mark One here. It's one of the one of the earlier ones. This is on an F, so it's 5768. Let's take a look inside this one actually, because it looks interesting. Sprite Wayfarer, okay, Sprite obviously a caravan manufacturer. Look at that. That's um oh, it's got one of those little black and white televisions in there as well. We used to have those back in the day. Then um, a couple of American cars. This one, um, it's like a like a Dodge. Yeah, it's a Dodge. It's Dodge Ram with little horns on it. There we go. Can't remember what year that is. About ninety-eight, ninety-nine. Over the Mercury Cougar XR7. It's a bit later than the one on the Magic Secret Service. It's like a seventy-three. This one. Actually, we don't trip over anything here, views. It's a, always a danger around here. It's got all kinds of interesting bits on it. Yeah, it looks a bit looks very fit actually. Have you got something altogether older? Much, much older. We're sort of looking like like what's a hundred years old. It's right to, to Morris Oxford, Bullnose Oxford, yeah, it'd be about hundred years old or so that. Right, I'll think I will stop for a bit here and um we will come back once the show is filled up a little bit. Right viewers, the uh, show is actually about to officially open, so uh, it's a lot fuller than it was when we were going around earlier. Someone's bought this um, very interesting thing here. Now it's got the K-series in it, it's got something, mm, yes, very non-standard on there. Now the MG ZR Express and Rover Commerce, which were van versions of the Rover 25 and MG ZR, they only came in in 2003, and this, this van wears a 2000 registration, so given that the ZR itself didn't come out to 2001, I think this is a Rover 25 which has been modified with the, the uh, panels from um, the uh, ZR Express or Commerce, and the interior is stripped out to make it into a van. Got the um, Cosmos wheels are similar to the Rover 200 BRM wheels on this, uh, with the MG badges in the middle, which is uh, interesting. So that's probably quite fast. I saw a young lady driving that. And we've got a 2004 MG ZR here, which is a tribute to a gentleman by the name of Jack Davies. I see that's in really nice condition. Oh, it's a 160 as well. Right, let's move on to the next area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gentleman who's exhibiting on the Beards and Bangers stand with me says I can film this because it's a petrol, so I shall. 2015 to 16 Mark III Focus ST. Um, it looks reasonably standard apart from, well, these side vent things on here, which um, are interesting. I bet that's very quick, viewers. Ooh, another. V6 engine MGZT has turned up. I imagine this is a, it's a 190, unless it's got an automatic gearbox in it. Uh, yes, same old uh, KV6, well, albeit a 2.5 litre. That's my 45 V6. Yeah, it's a 190 plus. I'm doing better than I used to in these regards. So this is actually a 2003, that's a personal plate. Let's have a look down here. See if there's anything else that we can uh, discuss. That um, 
There are 25 there, we can't. She might have to go around the other way. Excellent, another ZR 160 with um, some engine modifications going on, strut brace and things like that. Um, even more power. Awful lots of power. To, if that's the right um, sort of plate for the car, it'll be a 2003. Another ZR, is this another 160? There should be loads of 160s here. No, it's, it's not. Um, could be actually, but it's just not with a badge. But uh, yeah, 2003 to 4. And then Morgan stand. That's a brand new Morgan, it's a 73 plate. Wow. <laughs> it doesn't look very different from most of them. I'm going to be careful filming here because there are some people coming in down here and um, I don't want to get run over. Yeah, um, this actually might say what it is on the information sheet here. It's a plus four 2023. Don't be sort of being W bits in them now. But yeah, if you, uh, it's one of these ones where you had to order about five years ago and eventually the car turns up. It's one of those sort of cars. Much older one here, 4 4. Isle of White Plate. I don't even know what year that is. This one has a personal plate on it, but. Uh, could actually be newer than 2015. It's difficult to know these. I mean, you look at this one here, and then look at the uh, 2023 model. They don't particularly look very different, do they? At all. That's why people like them. So uh, this one is a 2021 to 2022 on a 71 registration. Still, yeah, you still got the manual gearbox in it. Another plus four, yeah. Dove grey, apparently, is the name of that colour. And we've got some stags. Excellent. 73, 74, this one. I think this is actually a Mark, uh, a Mark II, judging by the interior light. The automatic one. Both of these are 74, 75. Actually, that one is as well. Um, on end registration, will all be Mark IIs. We've got a stag friend in here. Hey, he's got little antlers and everything. This one's a manual. They are just very, very handsome cars with a surprisingly high survival rate considering reputation that the engines had and also reputation they had for rust and poor quality back in the day. I mean, you, you can these days actually, you know, make a, st a stag a, a very, very good car with all the, the bits that are available to improve them now. And they're not that expensive either. You can pick them up for so four to five thousand if um, they have, you know, engine swaps like a, I don't know, a 2.5 straight six or something like that. Right, let's go down here and see if there's anything else we didn't see earlier on. So a Test Valley Mini Club, 1995, uh, 1996. This will be a, I think, of a late Mark 6, early Mark 7 Mini. It's a late Mark 6. So ignore what it says on the outside, it's, it's not a 60s one. It's quite common actually to change these rear lights to make it look a lot older than it is, but it, it's from the 90s. You can tell by the dashboard and things as well. Then something here from so 83, 84. So this has got, I think, more modern seats in it and things, but it's yeah, from the uh, early 1980s. The thing about minis, people customise them to the nth degree, really. And so it's difficult to know what originally they were sometimes. Um, 74, 75 pickup. Do we have an information sheet about this? Oh, yes, there we go. Oh, it is a 75, okay. Got 1275cc A plus engine. A lot of metros did die back in the day uh, to give engines to minis. Obviously, that's now changing. People appreciate metros now, but well as the minis. And a Clubman Estate in a very, very 70s colour. That is just extraordinary. The wheels are off a 1990s mini, I think. Um, another Renner, no, no, V, so it's uh, 7980 late Clubman. 
And then we've got Jaguar XJ6 here because, uh, well, why not? Because we like these very much, viewers. Hmm, I think the first of many beige leather interiors with wood. Hmm, very, very nice. I think it's a little bit later than that 2002 to 3 plate. I followed this in on my way here actually, uh, 1967 MG Midget. I think by this stage it's a Mark III. I've done the 68 and um, this looks similar to this. It was a bit cramped viewers though, it was very cramped. Then we've got some second generation Jaguar XKs here. Both on personal plates, I'm not exactly sure what, uh, what year they are. This one is the R version, so you get more power and quite enormous wheel actually as well. I think this is my preference though, with um, some nice beige leather interior and cream wood action going on. You can see the, uh, the front ends are a little bit different. And then we've got um, first generation ones here. Oh, that's very nice, that one. That for, I, I, I have to keep that to sell for £50. It's not, it's the model aircraft in the windscreen. Actually, um, since we're here, we might as well uh, let's take a look at some nice cream leather interior action with this XKR from 1999. It's got the classic interior in it, actually. The classic interior with all this wood in it and things like that. You could get a different interior if you wanted to, but you know, in a car like that, why would you? Classic interior it is for me. 2004 Porsche Boxster S in Guards Red. I didn't realize Guards Red was made as late as that, but uh, you know we're always learning something new every day, aren't we? And then I thought this was a C for a second. No, it's a B. All oh, the heritage shelf, 69. Okay, um, it's a 1950cc engine. Interesting. Yeah, I didn't realize you could just buy a shell and put the bits in it, but of course you can. Something else that um, I didn't see earlier on is this Mark III Ford Cortina. It might only be a 1600, but that's very nice. GT, judging by the grill, that's in superb condition, isn't it? Uh, 7273, I think that's before the facelift came in. I get there's something else sort of in here as well now. I mean, oh, yes, there is. Oh, oh viewers. I think some of you will be very excited by this. If this is a real Cosworth, and it will be appreciated in value as I'm walking around it. It's the right sort of age for it though, and um, the right plate, because a lot of the uh, RS Cosworths and things were on Essex plates like this one, 86-87. Wonderful. Ooh, the Granada stand has had a couple of entrants. Very, very nice. Mark II facelift gear estate here mm, with the 2.8 Cologne V6. This has uh, the more original wheels on it, sort of 80, 384 on A. And it's got the green Chatsworth interior on this one. And then a Granada Minster. Yeah, it's sort of like a half limousine. Can't remember exactly the makers of it. Was it Coleman Milner built this or was it Little Nickerson? I can't remember. Oh, there we go. Um, it is, oh, it's Coleman Milner, okay, that makes sense. 1977. These are, these are, these are rare. <laughs> They're very, very rare, these. Um, some more information about them. It's, it's a 10-inch stretch. It's a 3 litre S saloon, which is an unusual basis for a car like this. You'd expect them to want um, the gear by now, but uh, I appreciate the fact that this is a freely to rest, and that's um, wonderful, really. That'll do for part one, I think, it is. Thank you ever so much indeed once again for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like this video, leave a comment below, and uh, we shall see you again in part two for some more incorrect information and very strange aliens. <laughs>